She took the matchbox and struck the match against the strip. The smell of the ignition smoke wafting up to her nose. The luscious smell of smoke finally nullifying in her mind the scent of Laura's skin in her husband's nose. She looked at the lit match and for a brief moment watched the flicker of the warm flame. A beacon of hope and vengeance in the cold bedroom. Her eyes refocused off the flame to the form of Jake's sleeping body. She moved the flame to the comforter at the end of the bed. With a hint of hesitation, she pressed the flame to the fabric, right next to where those grey, lace-trim panties she'd found stuffed into his drawer with an empty love card sat on top of the comforter. It caught immediately, and it grew, lavishly, ludicrously enveloping the fabric and filler of the comforter. The smoke grew higher. From Anna's eyes, she watched the flame devour the bedding above her husband's body, her mind racing about how deep into the bed the fire went. Was the fire carving into those adulterous legs of his body yet? No, probably not, she surmised. He wasn't screaming in horrific pain yet. He was probably just getting toasty. The fire was now sensuously devouring the comforter above his chest. It would be less than a minute before it touched his disgusting face. His head moved to one side. He looked like he was waking in alarm. His eyes opened and within a moment knew something was horribly wrong. He first noticed the temperature. The heat touching his lower body. He screamed and tried to leap up. He couldn't. She'd already tied his arms and legs down. That was the moment he realized he was about to die. His face contorted into an existential terror that his life was about to be lost. But then his eyes met hers. In that one instance he realized he understood how the story was playing out. He knew that she knew about Laura in their bed, and now she was murdering him. Oh, oh. She smiled, her hate welling up into her lovely sapphire eyes. No. The flames leapt like a bird landing from flight onto his face and hair. That hair that Laura had grabbed in passion, and it burned the impurity of Laura's saliva off Jake's lips. And his face burst into flame, his skin melting. His scream started to be drowned out by the drone of fire consuming its meal. A few more seconds and the fire was consuming the bed. The bed of adultery. Anna watched the catharsis of her bedroom. Jake was dead and consumed. The suffering for him was over, but oh, it had been such a terror to his soul for those delectable few minutes. Worth every delicious moment. The smoke now filled the bedroom. Anna turned around and walked into the bathroom. She reached into her shorts pocket and took out the six-sided dice. She rolled it on the bathroom counter. It bounced up and down and around and around. She watched impatiently as it landed and showed her what she expected to see. A seven. Anna opened her eyes. She was lying in bed. It was still dark. Jake lay next to her. She sat up, her body still exhausted from sleep. This one had been very lucid. She had believed she was awake, and that scared her. Because all of the other lucid dreams she'd had, 
She knew she was dreaming when she'd killed Jake, but this time it felt so real. She grabbed her phone from the end table. 5.24 a.m., the time read. Jake wouldn't be up for another 16 minutes. She had time. She went over to the end table on her husband's side and picked up his phone. With her heart on her sleeve, she started reading through his work email. Four messages from Laura. All personal, with a flirty tinge to their content. None business related. She'd first suspected Laura was a threat when Jake hired her as a junior analyst three months ago. It quickly became obvious she had a tiger by the tail with this situation. Laura was all over Jake's Facebook, commenting and liking everything. But then she started to suspect that something more was going on. This was the same time when her lucid dreams had really kicked into high gear. She'd always been able to be lucid, but lately, since she discovered the affair, they had become even more real. Anna found things around the house that seemed out of place. Things that to her told her someone else had been here. Someone. An intruder. She knew what was going on behind her back. Why Jake was coming home at lunch. Why he was home early before she got home some days. She mourned hard at first. But then her mourning turned to hate. And her hate turned to murder. She'd played out the murder scene in her mind a thousand times. A thousand times in her dreams. Her lucid dreams. She still wasn't ready to do it in real life. But she did it every night in her dream. And every dream brought her closer to the inevitable. Jake woke up while Anna showered. Then she got dressed and left before he had finished in the bathroom. Her morning was a blur. She didn't want to talk to him or anyone. He texted her around 10am, asking if she could pick up chicken breasts and milk at the grocery store on the way home. She didn't bother responding, but playing the martyr would do it anyway. He was still clueless. Clueless that she knew, and that things weren't okay between them. It was 6pm. She got into the elevator and rode it down to the lobby. It was rainy and dark outside. The drive to the grocery store was mournful and boring. Tomorrow was her birthday. She could expect the usual from Jake. He would buy her two presents. One, something she was wanting. One, something intimate, like a teddy or lacy underwear or something that his lustful mind concocted. And then a card. She pulled into the parking lot and walked through the wet air into the store. It was busy and well lit inside. She mindlessly walked the aisles and grabbed the chicken and milk and a couple of other things she figured they would need. She turned into aisle six and grabbed some tea. Then, turning the corner over to aisle seven, she stopped abruptly as she almost ran into a woman and her cart. Her heart sank. It was Laura. She was in a blue business dress with a beautiful gold necklace around her neck, her gorgeous hair cascading over her naked shoulders. Had Jake unzipped this dress hours earlier, she wondered. Laura's eyes uncomfortably met Anna's. Anna stared in cool anger. Laura looked away, then looked back at her. Hi, Anna, she said cheerfully. Anna didn't say anything and moved past her. Right after they passed, Laura spoke out. Hey. Laura stopped. Her face was genuine, as much of a farce as that could be. I just want to tell you that I really respect you. 
Jake talks about you all the time when I'm with him at the office. He loves you so much. Anna nodded. Thank you. Uh, hey, we should all three get dinner one night, Laura proposed, hopefully. Anna nodded and faked a smile. Yeah, that'd be nice. They parted, and Anna went down aisle seven to get her last items. Anna stood in front of the bed. She had stood here a thousand times over a thousand nights, her mind turning over and over the interaction she'd had with Laura at the grocery store. Her fingers mechanically lit the match. At the base of the bed were those grey lace panties, the ones she'd found hid away in Jake's drawer. She pressed the fire to the bed, this time without hesitation. It felt real, just like every other time. The fire consumed the comforter and sheets like every other time. A minute later, Jake woke up and screamed. He howled in horrible pain as he suffered. This time, though, it lasted longer than before. Maybe she was processing the events at the grocery store. Maybe it was just different. But his suffering sounded so brutal. His eyes met hers with a fear she had seen over and over. But his eyes looked a little different. Like he didn't understand what was happening. Why he was tied down. Why he was burning. The other times it was undeniably clear that he knew the truth. He burned and burned alive until the life of him was consumed away. The bed exploded in bright flame. Then she turned around and walked to the bathroom. She took out the dice and rolled it. It bounced around like every other time. And it landed on a six. Thanks for taking the time to drop by and watch this video. You know what would make me a happy doctor? Hitting that like button, leaving a comment, and subscribing to my channel. Go on, I've got plenty more stories to tell you. <laughs>